day five, we're going to look at composition of functions again. For the warm-up, find the following. G of 2, which means when the input is 2, what is the output? The input is the x value, so in our graph, we find where x is 2. When the, um, when the x value is 2, the output would be 3. So we'll say g of 2 equals 3. Let's find g of negative 3. So negative 3, we'll find when the x value is negative 3, and it also is 3. C is saying, okay, the output is 4. Find the input that gives the output of 4. Okay, so let's find where the output is 4. So along this line right here, and there's one answer. When the output is 4, the input is 1. So we'll say x equals 1. <clears throat> so today we're going to look at a composition of functions graphically. With this example, there's been a terrible tanker accident off the coast of California that spilled some oil into the ocean. Find the area of the oil slick after 4 hours. So this is a composition of functions in a graph. To find the area, we need the radius, assuming that this is a circular um, oil spill. And so our first graph right here, it says, <clears throat> for part A, I should say, find the area if the radius of the oil spill is 2. So if we decode this, uh, this is what it means. So if the, if the radius is 2, find the area. So first we need the radius. We'll use this radius graph first. We'll go up and over. So after two hours, the radius is one. So we know that this right here is one. So now we're going to find the area when the radius is one. So we'll use our second graph here. When the radius is one, then the area is about four. I'll say about 3.9. So we see the area when the radius of the oil spill is two is about 3.9 kilometers squared. The next one is saying, all right, what if the radius is 4? Then find the area of the oil spill. So let's go over here. When the um, radius or the time is 4, oops, let me get a straight line here. Okay, so that's about 1.5. The radius is 1.5. So let's find the area when the radius is 1.5. We'll use our second graph. We'll go up. We'll go over, and it's about 8 point, let's see, this is 4, 6, so it's almost 9, this is 10 right here, so we'll say like 8.9, so we'd say the area and the radius is 4 is about 8.9 kilometers squared. So this is an example of using a composition of functions. We're going to use the answer for the first function to find the answer for the second function. And again, our first function here was the radius over time. And then we, once we found the radius, we were find, able to find the area. So again, what does this mean in words? It means you find the radius. Well, I'll do this one first. Um, so when the radius is 2, the area is about 3.9 kilometers squared. So composition of functions is using two or more functions together. So review. Composition of functions is using the answer from the inside function to find the answer of the outside function. Use these graphs to evaluate the expressions. All right, so for our, um, the first one we have, find f of g of 0. So we start with the inside function g of 0. Okay, so g of 0 would be negative 1. So this becomes negative 1. So now we're going to find f of negative 1. So f of negative 1, well, there's, um, so f of negative 1, so two answers there. We go negative, when x is negative 1, we go down and over. And we say that's also negative 1. So we say f of g of 0 equals negative 1. So again, using the first, the answer of the first function, to find the answer for the second function. Let's find g of f of 0. Okay, so now we start with the f function. Okay, so when f of 0, f of 0, when x is 0, I should say, then the y value, the output, would be negative 2. 
So this is negative 2. So now let's find g of negative 2 in this graph. All right, so g of negative 2 So that is when we're going to find when the x value is negative 2 right here. And I guess we should kind of extend my graph, which I didn't do. And that would be about 1. Um, here's, here's like negative 2 right here. So we'll say about negative 1.7. So we say g of f of 0 is about negative 1.7. Okay, and let's do the last one, g of f of negative 1. So we start with negative 1 in the f function. Okay, so here's negative 1, and that would be negative 1 here. So we find g of negative 1 then. And here, negative 1, we go over, and that would also give us negative 1. So we say g of f of negative 1 equals negative 1. So again, a composition is, is using the answer of one function to find the answer for the second function. Okay, we can also do that from a table or set of points. So here are a bunch of coordinates. Uh, the functions f and g are defined by these input and output values. Find g of f of 4. So start, start with f of 4. That means when the input's 4, what's the output for the f function? And that would be negative 2. So now find g of negative 2. So that would be 7. So we say g of f of 4 equals 7. Okay, let's find g of f of 6. Okay, start with f of 6, that would be 10. And then we want to find g of 10, which would be 3. So we say g of f of 6 equals 3. Okay, let's do the next one. Find f of g of 9. Okay, so start with g of 9 first. That would be 0. So now find f of 0, and that would be 3. So we say f of g of 9 equals 3. Let's do the next one. Find f of g of negative 4. Okay, start with the g function. When the input is negative 4, what's the output? It's negative 2. So now we want to find f of negative 2. So when the input's negative 2, what's the output? It is 5. So we say f of g of negative 4 equals 5. So there's a composition of functions using coordinates. Same, it would look the same, pretty much the same in a table. All right, let's look at from equations. Find f of g of 3. So we're going to start with g of 3. So there's the first step. g of 3 equals 1 minus 5 times 3, which is 1 minus 15, which is negative 14. So then the next step is... We want f of negative 14, which would be, oops, <clears throat> negative 3 times, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, negative 3 times uh, negative 14 plus 4. Okay. So if we do that, 3 times 14 is 42, and that would be negative 42. And then we would add 4 to that, and we would get negative 38. So we say in our final answer, f of g of 3 equals negative 38. So again, you use the answer from the first function, which is negative 14, and you plug it into the second function and solve. All right, find f of g of x. Okay, so I'm going to give myself more room here. Okay, so f of g of x may, means take this function, the g of x function, and plug it in for x into the f function. Okay, so our f function is negative 3 x plus 4. So instead of the x, I'm going to plug in the g of x function, and then I'm going to add 4 to that. Okay, so when you're plugging a function into another function, you won't get a number answer. You're going to get an expression for your answer. So now let's distribute. We'll get negative 3 plus 15x. So there's the distributing plus the 4. 
and we'll simplify. We can combine like terms here. So we will get 1 plus 15x. So we say f of g of x equals 1 plus 15x. Let's try it the other way. Let's do g of f of x. So this time we start with the f of x function, that negative 3x plus 4. We're going to plug it in for x into the g function. So we have 1 minus 5 over here. And then instead of x, we're going to plug in this function right here, negative 3x plus 4. So let's do that. Negative 3x plus 4. And then we'll distribute. This is a negative 5 we distribute. So it'll be 15x minus 20. And we saw that 1 minus, 1 minus, or 1, this 1 hanging out in the front right here. So it is 1 plus 15x minus 20. We'll combine like terms. So we'll get negative 19 plus 15x. So again, if you plug one function into the other, instead of x, you write the new function, then you'll distribute and combine like terms. So we'll practice that today. We have a table, we have a graph, two graphs, and then we have plugging functions into another function. Mm -hmm.